Today is World Refugee Day, a day dedicated to highlighting the strength and courage of those who have been and continue to be forcibly relocated from their homes across the globe. It's something our next guest knows a lot about. She is the head of engagement at Rainbow Railroad, an organization that works to safely relocate LGBTQI plus people around the world. But she was also relocated through the organization herself, having grown up in Jamaica under constant threat for her sexuality and activism. She joins us today in studio. Please welcome LaToya Nugent. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, LaToya. It's so great to have you here for this very important conversation. But I want to start off, there's a lot of misconceptions about what or who a refugee is. So let's start there. In what ways do you think people are limited in the way that they think about refugees? So the first thing that comes to most people's minds when they talk about refugees is the security threat uh, that they claim that they are to the country they are relocating to. And that really just is not the case. Uh, folks who are forced to flee their homes, they are relocating to countries like Canada, because they are looking for a place of refuge, a place where they want to recreate what it means to have a home and to belong and to have, you know, community support around them. And so that is something I really would want us to, you know, make clear that uh, refugees are not uh, a threat to the security of any country. We really just want to feel like we belong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Important message. You work at Rainbow Railroad, and for those who are not familiar, that's an organization that specifically works to relocate locate LGBTQI plus people around the world. So what challenges are unique to refugees within that community? Hmm. So accessing resettlement uh, programs or resettlement pathways is difficult generally. Uh, the asylum uh, claim process is also very complex and long, particularly for LGBTQI plus refugees. Uh, we have to prove, you know, or sexual orientation and, and prove our gender identity for folks who are trans identified. And the persecution and violence that many LGBTQ plus people experience, it's so personal mm -hmm. to them. You know, when there is a, a war happening, people are aware of that globally. And so there is no reason to prove that you have to flee your home because of this war. Mm -hmm. But with LGBTQ plus refugees, a lot of the persecution that uh, we experience uh, would be very personal sometimes, even at the level of the family. And so it's difficult, uh, you know, for folks to have to, to, to prove that uh, mm -hmm. in order to access uh, resettlement mm -hmm. pathways. All right, and the Rainbow Railroad released a new report today on the state of the global LGBTQI plus persecution. What was the most striking takeaway? Mm -hmm. The most striking thing for me was the record number of requests for help that we received uh, last year. Mm. You know, in 2022, we received less than 10,000 requests for help. Last year, that uh, increased significantly. We had to field 15,352 wow. requests for help. And we were also able to support a record number of uh, individuals, just over 7,000, which means that uh, there are 7,000 less uh, LGBTQ plus people who are at risk. Uh, in their home countries. Not everyone is able to relocate. And so some of the support that we were able to provide to individuals would have been in-country support. Now, you were, as we mentioned off the top, you were relocated through Rainbow Railroad yourself. So you grew up in Jamaica where, in case people don't know, homosexuality is criminalized. It's a crime. Um, what type of discrimination were you facing when you lived there? Oh, that's a long list, but I know it's a short program, um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll keep it brief. But there is a lot of uh, homophobic violence uh, that uh, you experience uh, in Jamaica. It's also a little bit more difficult for women who identify as queer. You know, I experienced a lot of uh, threats of homophobic rape. There's a lot of sexual harassment that you have to experience uh, on the street. Um, I also experienced, uh, you know, persecution at uh, my place of work. You know, there was discrimination because uh, people knew of my sexual orientation. I was also an activist uh, back in Jamaica and the Caribbean more broadly, and that makes you a target, uh, you know, and you, so you become a victim of state-sponsored homophobia and transphobia. So there's quite a bit uh, that you have to navigate. There's also a lot of displacement that occurs, a lot of homelessness, 
uh, that occurs, uh, uh, you know, for people who identify as LGBTQ+, mm -hmm. because of the widespread discrimination mm -hmm. and uh, violence that uh, we experience mm -hmm. as LGBTQI+. Mm -hmm. So you never felt safe, which kind of leads me to my next question, because we're talking, when we're talking about the urgent needs of refugees, we're usually always talking about the need for safety. So what has safety meant for you? It's so simple for me. I relocated to Canada uh, in November of 2022. So if my calculation is right, that's probably about 19 months. Mm. And uh, the way that I've been able to walk peacefully you know, uh, in the streets of Toronto is something that uh, I celebrate every single day. I walk to work, I walk by the lake, and uh, I have walked more in the last 19 months than I have in my entire life back in Jamaica because it feels safe to do that here. Wow. And it may sound very simple, you know, for people who've perhaps lived here all their lives and they've been able to affirm their identity and just celebrate uh, who they are, but just to be able to walk in the streets, not just to celebrate pride, but, you know, in the everyday, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going and, and, and coming, going to the grocery store, going to work or going to a party, doesn't matter. Just feeling, you know, safe to be in, in, the, in the street, in public, regardless of the time of day. That is something that I celebrate and I hope I'll never take it for granted. Wow, mm -hmm. that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the refugee resettlement system here in Canada, what do you think is the, the biggest and, and perhaps the most urgent issue? So... Two things, the asylum claim process is very long. And so when people make a claim, they, they have to spend a lot of time trying to navigate that asylum uh, process. The other thing is uh, housing. You know, we know that housing is a challenge in the GTA, uh, but beyond that, for LGBTQI plus people specifically and LGBTQI plus refugees, uh, it's really difficult for them to access affordable housing because they don't have a support network here. Um, a lot of us, you know, we're relocating alone, so we don't have mm. connections to family, friends, or a wider network for support. And so, you know, that's an area where I think we need to do some more work to provide mm -hmm. support. Well, Canada is the most commonly requested relocation country for refugees around the world. So how can we help refugees living within our own communities? So there are simple things you can do. The first thing I would recommend is that you donate to Rainbow Railroad mm -hmm. because we need funding to be able to you know, take on this work. The other thing I would also recommend is that you volunteer with the organization because in volunteering, you can provide tangible uh, support to individuals after they relocate. And we currently have a program with Refugee Housing Canada mm -hmm. where for, you know, Canadians who have a spare bedroom or if you're fortunate enough uh, to have one, two, three, or four additional apartments and you're able to make that uh, accessible to LGBTQ plus refugees at below market rates, I think those are three very tangible things that people can do to support the community. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing your story and for all the work that you continue to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So how about this? You can visit rainbowrailroad.org. That is rainbowrailroad.org if you'd like more information on how you can help or better yet, even donate to this urgent cause. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.